you ever heard of manna? Probably not unless you've been in church for a while, but we're talking about that today in Exodus chapter 16. guys and welcome back to God's Word Made Simple by Simple Servant Ministries. My name is Aaron Hawk and if this is your first time visiting with us, I just want to say welcome and thank you for joining us today. God's Word Made Simple is an online discipleship ministry dedicated to taking God's Word and making it simple. We want to help you understand God's Word, apply it to your life, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. And by the way, if you appreciate this ministry and content, at some point make sure and hit that subscribe button, turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. We would love to have you as part of our family. Okay guys, welcome back. So today we are in Exodus chapter 16, going from verses 9 through 21. Last week, if you didn't catch it, or I shouldn't say last week, I didn't have a video last week. Um, if you want to know what's going on, I got a lot on my plate and there's only so much bandwidth and I just couldn't record enough. So I apologize that we didn't have a video last week. Check out my video, my last channel update. If you kind of want to know a little bit of what's going on, um, things are better since that update, but... I'm still sort of catching up, even though that was a long time ago. So anyway, um, I apologize I didn't have a video last week. So if you didn't catch the last Exodus video, I'll cheat that way. Whichever was my last one, it would have been 16, 1 through 8. Um, so check out my video there. Um, so that'll kind of get you caught up because we're just going to jump straight into Exodus chapter 16, verse 9. So right after the promise that God would provide meat and that he would provide manna. So let's jump into verse 9. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumblings. And remember earlier in verse uh, 4, of chapter 16, God said that he was going to test the people because they had been complaining nonstop since they left Egypt. Oh, if only we had died in Egypt. Moses, what are you doing to us? This God is going to kill us. All that kind of stuff, right? So right here he's saying he has heard your grumblings. Then verse 10, it came about as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the sons of Israel that they looked toward the wilderness and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Now, we don't exactly know what that means. We know there was a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. Some people suggest that, that, that it was combined fire and cloud all the time. You just couldn't see the fire during the day. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment on that one. I, I tend to think not because it says them separately instead of saying them together. But some people then would say if it was the pillar of cloud by day and no fire, some people would say the glory of the Lord showing up would be fire, or it could have been an angelic appearance. We, we don't really know what that looked like. All we do know is it says the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. So I'd like to know. You can let me know what you think in the comments. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Ah, okay, so this was the point, right? They're grumbling against Moses, and then God shows up, or at least the glory of the Lord, because we can't look directly at God, right? Um, so yeah, but God shows up to show the people that they need to follow Moses, and to sort of get them to stop complaining, maybe? because he said he was going to test him in verse 4. Okay, anyway, God speaking now, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I have heard the grumblings of the sons of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So, they were complaining about not having anything to eat. Specifically, they mentioned bread and meat. And what is God providing? Bread and meat. I said it backwards, but meat and bread. He, exactly what they were complaining about not eating. So it came about at evening that the quails came up. So quail, that the quails came up and covered the camp. <laughs> so it's not like you could say, see, people try to disprove the Bible. Oh, well, you know, of course a quail or two could have wandered. No, no, no. It says quails came up and covered the camp. See, they don't travel in large packs like that. Clearly, this was an act of God. Plus, they were wandering through a wilderness. Okay, anyway. So it came about at evening that the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. And you're like, okay, 
Sure, we got quail. Why are you mentioning dew? You'll see in a moment. When the layer of dew evaporated, behold, on the surface of the wilderness, there was a fine flake-like thing. Notice the way it describes it. A fine flake-like thing. They don't know what to call it. So they called it manna. I'll, we'll see that later on in another passage. Um, but when the layer of dew evaporated, behold, on the surface of the wilderness, there was a fine flake-like thing, fine as the frost on the ground. When the sons of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? Right? They've never seen this before. So some people, again, some people that just don't believe the miracles of the Bible, they'll try to say, well, see, when the Bible talks about manna, it says that it's like a flower. So uh, yeah, it, it had to have been just like flour. Or they, they found plants to make stuff out of. But first off, the people are asking what it is. But also notice again in verse 14, it was fine flake-like thing fine as the frost on the ground. So even the people don't know what it is. And then Moses says, it is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. So it wasn't bread yet. It was some unknown substance that they could then take and make bread from. I don't even know how to fathom that. My brain cannot comprehend what that is, but I can't comprehend God either, because if I could, I'd have to be, well, I'd have to be at least equal to God, if not greater than, which of course that's not possible. So I don't understand this, I just know what it says. Basically, every morning when the dew evaporated, there's this fine stuff that became called manna. So in other words, God used the dew as the mechanism of delivery. See, the God of miracles often does use natural things, and yet it's used in an unnatural way. How awesome is that? Also, before we move on, notice that this is the bread that they asked for. When Jesus calls himself the bread of life in multiple passages, I think it's at least multiple passages in the New Testament, this is actually referring back to manna. So now you kind of know the underpinnings of what Jesus was talking about when he was called the bread of life. All right, verse 16. This is what the Lord has commanded. So Moses is now giving the commands related to this stuff. Gather of it every man as much as he should eat. You shall take an omer apiece according to the number of persons each of you has in his tent. So basically, there's enough for one person to have a portion of bread daily. So uh, you shall take an omer apiece according to the number of persons each of you has in his tent. So you got somebody going out and gathering the stuff together enough that each person in their family has a serving, like a day's worth of serving. The sons of Israel did so, and some gathered much and some little. Okay? When they measured it with an omer, he who had gathered much had no excess. So they did a lot of extra work trying to gather up as much as they could. Greed. <laughs> They had no excess. In other words, somehow, even though they had gathered a lot, they still had an omer, one serving per person. And he who had gathered little had no lack. Now, my sarcastic behind, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll pick one little thing there, right? If that's how this is going to work. I don't imagine it worked that way. I don't think God would reward that kind of laziness. Although he is sort of in that same sense rewarding grumbling. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments on that one too. Um, but anyway, it says, He who gathered little had no lack. Every man gathered as much as he could eat. So a day's portion. Moses said to them, Let no man leave any of it until morning. So in other words, this is the daily provision or the daily bread. Ha <laughs> ha! See, now you understand the Lord's Prayer a little bit better. When it says, give us this day our daily bread, it is a daily dependence. It's not just some saying. It actually goes back to this passage right here. How cool is that? Right? Yes, I'm geeking out. It's late at night and I'm recording and this is awesome because God is awesome. 
right there in the Lord's Prayer that so many people have memorized. Give us this day our daily bread. I guarantee you the majority of people don't know that that's actually where that phrase come f came from. Come from. Bad English, Aaron. Each day they gathered the bread for that day. Completely dependent upon God. No excess, no lack. Don't have extra, don't go without. All right. But they did not listen to Moses. See, God said he was going to test the people to see if they would obey him in verse 4. Nope. But they did not listen to Moses, and some left part of it until morning. If you haven't been watching this channel very long, I 100% know with absolute certainty that God has a demented sense of humor sometimes. Read the rest of the verse with me. We'll, we'll go back up to the beginning of the verse. But they did not listen to Moses, and le some left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and became foul. <laughs> God's up there in heaven going, <laughs> told you. I just love God's sense of humor. Okay, we'll move on. I, I could really derail there and take this video a hundred different directions. I love God's sense of humor because we think we're so smart. As human beings, we think we're so smart at getting away with stuff. Well, I know God said that, but <laughs> I'm going to do this. We don't get away with anything as much as we trick ourselves into thinking that we do. And Moses was very angry. Or, I'm sorry, it says, and Moses was angry with them. Yeah, it's pretty frustrating being a leader and watching people continuously disobey the command of God. Unfortunately, Moses is going to struggle with that a lot as he leads the people of Israel. A little foreshadowing for later on. Then verse 21, they gathered it by morning, or sorry, they gathered it morning by morning, every man as much as he should eat. But when the sun grew hot, it would melt. So God took care of that quick, fast, and in a hurry too, as far as them trying to save the bread for the next day, since they didn't listen. Oh, we're not as smart as we think we are. All right, guys, that's it for today. Let me know any of your thoughts or questions in the comment. I love hearing from you guys and being able to interact with you on the, uh, on the, in the comments there. Um, also, if you want to support this channel or you want to know the best way to support the channel, uh, check out my video, How to Support Your Favorite YouTube Channel, even if you're watching on something other than YouTube. Um, the same basic principles still apply. So definitely check that out. Otherwise, on YouTube or wherever, whatever platform you're on, hey, also help us out. Hit that like, hit subscribe, turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. That's it for today, guys. Thank you very much, and God bless.